unfolded. Don't fold this, Serge. Get in there! Well done, get in there, yes. <laughs> cool. cool. And now, well, Norman Whiteside had a bit of a problem there, couldn't get involved with that three. I, I have to admit, I, I found that a very uh, optimistic bet by Cass Green, but this yeah. has worked out perfect for him, hasn't it? Into four players. Well, it may be difficult to get uh, Steve off the pot now. A hundred? 120. 120. Oh, it's... Well... That was bullying. I mean, Sedge was not to know that the fours no. were good. No. <laughs> Cascarino <laughs> just won that through sheer doggedness. I, and that may have been a little bit of the old Cascarino rearing his head, Steve, but maybe he thought that he's got the bankroll now to try and win some extra pots like that, just through sheer aggression. Well, he wasn't to know how strong Steve Sedge was, and uh, I think that's the problem is uh, he probably... It, probably knows that Steve Sedge nice doesn't quiet. know exactly either yet. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> you find about the, uh, Play, cool. the Irish footballers, I think poker was much more a part of the sort of team culture in uh, Ireland than in uh, other places perhaps. Most of the players here on show uh, strikers. Cool. Cool. Do you think they've got more aggression yeah. when it comes to poker? Do you, do you think it's sort of, you know, would you prefer to be a goalkeeper and play? What's the experience of goalkeepers in <coughs> football goalkeepers at poker? I think there was a legendary moment. Uli, Uli Stein, the famous German goalkeeper, was... Uh, and and, he, and he, he took out the devil fish. A stiff defense he played as well. Uh, impossible to push off a hand, Uli Stein. Lee Sharp has flopped <laughs> second pair. Easy. Easy. Nice. <laughs> nice bet. Once again, Tony really eyeing up. Yeah. Cool. John Aldridge. Cool. Yeah. And you know, Aldridge may be thinking here, hey, last time. I, yeah, I pushed this guy off like he was a pecan pie. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Sharp checks here, is he calling? A pecan. <laughs> Lee pecan 18. pie 18. sharp. It's the same. It's the same story. Surely not the same outcome. No. Yeah. Draw. It. Yes. Sand and lines and drawing. This is when you know a guy has got good instincts in poker. When he just gets the hump. I mean, we saw it with Austin Healy in in his match in the rugby. You know, he he was willing to lay down. But for one, two hand. Hand. <laughs> one, one hand, one hand, yes. But, but wow, what a card that is! Uh, should John Aldridge bluff at this? Oh, a check oh, would have been well, lovely here. I think he really should have been checking here. Yeah, we're we'll all in. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> <though>. He's, <laughs> I mean, yeah. in his mind, Aldridge may have a queen. Yours, Lee. Well done, mate. Great stuff by Sharp. And I think if that jack hadn't have come, he was still willing to put the money in. That would have been posted. I think you always like to beat the best, and I think the best at our table is Tony Cascarino. Uh, I think he's he's a professional player now, so um, you know, fir first time out for me, it's going to be a tall ask to beat him. But uh, I suppose he's he's the one that everyone's gunning for. Cascarino, as we are uh, two levels, and he's done it by playing small ball, Steve. Yes, and uh, all of a sudden there is a game of two halves developing, and uh, perhaps the more inexperienced players. Struggling at the moment, just a fraction. Is it time to step up the pace? Entirely possible that Steve Sedgley is sort of a low ball player and he thinks the aces are low. He doesn't seem to really value the ace. Obviously, mo most people think the ace is the strongest card in the game. Sedge has not, not uh, shown that same kind of, I, I don't know, you know, it's aces are tricky. Cool. Pass. The only card that plays both high and low. No, I, I, I worked it out. Uh, Steve, Steve is a <laughs> Steve Sedgley Pass. will play any pairs. <laughs> the rest of it he's prepared to throw away. I don't have an ace king. That's another story. But any pair, all the way down to Mrs. Mops. Oh. Wow! This is the second time Aldridge oh, no. has. <laughs> oh, uh, never okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, I was trying to espouse the low ball philosophy, and I think that this is a... Uh, yeah, it's best hand at low ball, yeah. But but Aldridge, the second time he sort of slow played a big pair before the flop, I think he's more of a... 
more of a flop and beyond player. If he gets checked around to him, you've got to think he's going to fire. <coughs> Check. Check. Sounds a bit Star Trek-y, that. Check. Check. Flop and beyond. Flop and beyond. Star Trek poker. Well, you know the parlor Easy. is going to recognize Eight. this is a pretty good draw. 3-4 with the 5-6. He's quickly counting, and not guaranteed he won't raise. He's capable. Cool. He's played kind of steady tonight, Parler. Usually yeah, he's... Uh, I think he's waiting uh, some a defining moment here. I'm not too sure where he is against these players at the moment. I, I really think this call by Lee Sharp is, is the kind of call you make when you didn't get any action on your kings the last hand. I know it's... It, it, you know, you kind of wish you had the kings now. Yeah. It's an interesting one for John Aldridge, isn't it? Yeah. I think he's probably committed to checking here. Check. Check. It's a brave bet, isn't it? Check. Although, Check. there's just yeah. weakness being shown. I don't know. Sharp had sort of that double clutch check that yeah. makes you... It's quiet check, perhaps. Well, that's a lovely card for Ray Parler. Is he going to get any payment from it? He may get John Aldridge to call. Depends on the price. I think he's nice price. Mm. Nice. He's priced it nice. Aldridge is thinking to himself, I can beat a bluff. And that's... That's really all. You can beat a pair of sevens. The parlor bluff me. Go on, Ray, I'll call you, mate. Hey, baby. Straight. See, that's why that's he's dangerous. He knows what cards you got, know. <laughs> yeah, Cascarino called the hand. Aldridge saying, hey, I was good till the river. But big news for Ray Parler. He is sort of rising up to challenge Cascarino. Yes, and the two preheat favourites. Oh, galloping away at the moment. I'm the reigning reigning champion of the heat, uh, which was fantastic last year with uh, five other football beating other five other footballers last year. And uh, but Tony Cascarino is the man to beat today uh, for all of us. Um, if, we, if, some, if we can get him knocked out early, then anybody can win, and, and, that, and that's what we're trying to do. All the rest of the lads. Still full table, and obviously when the blinds go up again, as they will soon, uh, it's going to become a bit of a Sort of danger game. In fact, we're going to see people going out very quickly. Raise. Yeah, cool. come on, Norman. A raise. Raise. Ah. Two to play. It's 200 total. This is interesting. Obviously, we hope and expect Norman to <laughs> call the raise. He doesn't have to re-raise, although that would be a move. There's no reason for Norman not to re-raise, in a sense. He's getting a bit short on the old yeah. cash. What's the total? 200 total, 130 to call. One of Norman's sevens has already gone by the by in John Aldridge's hand that he's folded. And a continuation bet from Tony Cascarino with overcards to Norman's sevens might seal the deal. It's really a question, Steve, of what Norman is sort of looking for here. Is he looking for a low flop? Is he looking to avoid an ace? This has to be a this has to be in the better range of flops. Here wow. he comes. Get in there. Mm, and that's got a... 200. He liked the look of the flop, and it was actually a decent flop for the sevens. Now, this is where Tony has to really ask himself a few important questions. Pass. And I think he's found the answer. But uh, that, that may be the first pot pit that Whiteside has put on his plate. And uh, he'll feel good about that, the footman.